multi-component poison from 7,000 years ago. In the femur of an antelope 7,000 years ago, which our ancestors served as quiver, scientists found traces of multi-component the poisons. Researchers suggest that this is probably the oldest confirmed a mixture consisting of two or more plant toxins that was a shot applied to the grottos to kill the game more effectively. The bone was found in 1983 in Kruger Cave in the West Magaliesburg Mountains, about 1.5 hours drive from Johannesburg, Republic South Africa. It belonged to an unknown species of antelope and its dating it has shown that it is 7,000 years old. X-rays have shown that to three modified bone caves were inserted. Bone and other artifacts found during excavations from 1983 was deposited in the magazines of the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg and lay there until 2022, when new research began archaeological in Kruger Cave. New excavations prompted researchers looking again at the artifacts found there. Analyses bone using the latest technologies showed traces the presence of probably the oldest multi-component poison in the world. Researchers have found at least two toxic plant ingredients, but they believe he is also third. Justin Bradfield from the University of Johannesburg said in an article published in The Conversation that it is not the oldest poison in the world. It is believed that the use of poison during hunting had the place is already about 60,000 to 70,000 years ago. Our discovery is the oldest confirmed use of a mixture of two or more plant toxins, used specifically for the arrowheads possibility of making complex recipes, whether to obtain poison, glue, or for medicinal purposes, directly refers to the cognitive abilities of their creators and traditional pharmacological knowledge, Bradfield said. Research using computed microtomography they showed that the sediment filling the marrow cavity, in which the grottos were placed shot, was not an ordinary settlement that could be expected from the bones the thigh antelope. The imaging clearly suggested that it was a foreign matter. Chemical analysis of the samples showed the presence of two toxic glycosides cardiac compounds that affect the functioning of the heart muscle digitoxins and statpatin titans. Both relationships were historically used for production of poisons used in bow hunting. The researchers found also ricinoleic acid, which can be formed as a result of toxic decay the ricin. These organic compounds are not found in one plant, indicating that several plant ingredients had to be combined to create a poison. Near Kruger Cave there are no plants that they contain digitoxin and version totine. Remains of these plants were not found also during excavations. This suggests that people traveled to long distances to get the ingredients, or there was a trade in these commodities. It is known that transport of various products even between distance the locations existed long before the gear was converted into a quiver. However, scientists did not expect to be traded with plants as well. For this the fact that people knew what plants to get, where to find them, and how to eat effectively use, says a lot about the pharmacological knowledge of ancient peoples living in the current areas of South Africa. Other studies say that in Southern Africa, glues coniferous trees made of resin were made about 60,000 years ago. Documented knowledge of the healing properties of plants in the region about the same period. However, the oldest confirmed drug that it combines more than one ingredient, only 500 years old. The use of poison in weapons suggests significant progress in development of hunting technology. Throughout the world, ancient hunters have used toxic compounds of plant or animal origin to increase the effectiveness of its weapon. It was no different in the southern parts of Africa. Many plants were used to make poisons. The earliest molecular evidence for the presence of poison in this the part of the world dates back 24,000 years ago. 
found in border cave on a wooden spatula, and the poison was ricinolic acid. The ricinolic acid is one of the byproducts of the strong toxin, which is ricin. It can be done find in a widely common plant a common castor. But the acid this one also occurs in castor oil, which is not toxic. Assuming that aerosinol acid found in border cave was a remnant of poison, that and this is how we are dealing here with a one component poison, not a complex recipe. A gene was discovered that could influence speech development. The mice they have equipped with it have become more allical. Scientists have determined that a certain protein variant occurring only in people's brains could they play a key role in the beginning of spoken language. In recent studies, they implanted it in mice. It turned out that he changed them the vocals when they called for each other. Modified rodents began to release more complex squeaks than mice without human protein. It is not entirely clear how human language developed. His, his the beginnings remain a mystery. Our close relatives, such as Neanderthals, they probably had anatomical features in the throat and ears that could enable speaking and hearing the language. They also had the Gen NOVA1, which is bound with the ability to speak. And yet only in modern people can be found extended areas of the brain that are crucial to the language and its understanding. The NOVA1 gene is present in all mammals. But his human the version is unique and different from the version found in Neanderthals and the Denisovian. This gene encodes the NOVA1 protein, which binds to RNA in the brain and is key to normal development. Modern people wear a variant of NOVA1 protein, it is called the I197B. Scientists from Rockefeller University and Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in New York they determined that this variant may have played an important role in the appearance spoken language in people. In a study published in Nature Communications, they described work in which they implanted the human NOVA1 variant into mice. It changed the vocalizations the rods. Mice have become more eloquent they spent more complex the squeaks. This gene is part of a massive evolutionary change in early modern people and point to poor ancient origin speed language, said Robert B. Darnell, neuroscientist at Rockefeller University in New York. NOVA1 can be an authentic human gene of language, although it is certainly only one of many specific people the genetic changes, he added. The speech allows us anatomical adaptations of the voice track and complex neural networks. However, the genetics behind them are weak she is known. In previous studies, another group of scientists have determined that the FOXP2 gene is essential for speech development. He is also involved in proper development of the brain. People with mutations in this gene show serious disorder of speech. FOXP2 in modern man is the same as in Neanderthals, suggesting that this variant was created in the ancestor of both lines the people. It is not known what the language skills of our extinct cousins were, but research shows that FOXP2 probably contributed to the formation of language he is spoken, although his role remains unclear. Looking for answers about the beginnings of a complex language human, researchers at Rockefeller University focused on the NOVA1 gene. Darnell he came into contact with him 30 years ago when his team linked him to the disease autoimmune, which caused serious mobility problems people. Then he came across the case of a boy with language and movement problems, who had only one working copy of the NOVA1 gene which prompted him to considering the idea that this gene may be related to speech. This gene controls the expression of dozens of other genes active in the brain. Produces specific RNA binding protein, crucial for brain development and neuromuscular control. Darnell cloned and described them and in 1993, 
It occurs in almost identical form in many species from mammals to birds, but not in humans. People have a unique form of this protein that differs single change of amino acid, from isoleucine to valine. This one subtle change could have played a key role in the early days of spoken language and expansion and survival the Homo sapiens. In recent research, Darnell and colleagues he used the CRISPR-Ca9 gene editing technique to replace the mouse NOVA1 protein with human variant I197V. It turned out that the human variant did not influences on neuronal development or motor control. It worked exactly the same, like the one who replaced. He had an impact on the genes associated with vocalization. We didn't expect that. It was one of the really surprising ones sometimes in science, Darnell said. Researchers noted that rodents with human protein variant they squealed differently. They discovered altered vocal patterns in both young two sexes, as well as in adult males. Compared to genetically unchanged mice, the modified young ones released higher frequency ultrasonic squeaks. They are theirs the noises did not draw the attention of the mother more than the sounds of the puppy from the group control, but these sounds may indicate an increased attempt to interact the social one. Similar changes were noted in adult males making noises magite when contacting the females in estrus. Darnell admitted that the males they talk differently than females. You can imagine that such changes inclusiveness can have a profound impact on evolution, he said. So did the I197V protein version have influenced evolution, eh man? The team of scientists began by determining whether or not a variant of this our closest cousins did not have. They compared eight human genomes with three Neanderthal genomes and one genome of Denisovan. As expected, ours the relatives, from whom it is believed, we have separated about 250,000-300,000. Years ago, they had a protein variant the same as the other mammals. They then searched 650,058 modern human genomes in the available databases. It turned out that only six people did not have a variant I197V. These six people had an archaic variant, and because the samples were left anonymized, the details about them are unknown. Our data shows that the population of ancestors of modern humans in Africa has evolved variant I197V, which then became dominant, perhaps because it provided the advantages associated with by voice communication. This population then left Africa and spread its all over the world, Darnell said. This suggests that a mutation that alters NOVA1 protein may have contributed to cognitive differences between humans and their closest relatives, and probably also to the aspects of complex speech and language. These changes have brought early people are so beneficial that mutations have become ubiquitous. The mutation and the this could have been one of the many changes that contributed to human development the language. The team suspects that the human variant causes molecular lesions in some parts of the developing brain, as shown research on rodents. NOVA1 encodes a protein called NOVA1 that can cut and rearrange the RNA fact information sections when it binds to neurons. It changes the way brain cells synthesize proteins, possibly form molecular diversity in the central nervous system. When Darnell and his syndrome humanized mice with human variant NOVA1, discovered changes molecular in RNA splicing visible in brain cells, especially in regions related to vocal behavior. <laughs>